celebrate the Lord's Supper. If you were at our Seder a couple weeks ago, you'll know that Jesus was celebrating Passover with his disciples. You'll know that during the, the Seder, God was so clearly illustrating his plan for salvation and redemption. And when Jesus took the cup, the cup of redemption, he said, this is my blood. When he took the bread, the afikoman, he said, this is my body. He was establishing for us a new covenant that the writer of Hebrews says is better in every way. Paul writes in Corinthians that Jesus became sin. One who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And Christ shed sufficient blood for all sin. Just going to take a moment, just pause. Set our hearts and our minds on what we are celebrating. The great cost that was paid. So that we might be free of sin. So that we can be purchased out of slavery. broken on our behalf. 
Father, we thank you that where there was no way, you made a way. Father, where there was separation, you have brought union. We thank you, Father, that you looked at the cost. And though the price was very high, you paid it. And on the cross, your absolute justice <coughs> met your absolute love. when we confess our sins you are faithful and just you forgive them take and eat
Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you, Father, for their teachers. I ask, Father, that as they go together to study your word, that, Father, not one would be lost. Father, that the seed planted today would be planted in good soil and would produce a great harvest. We thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Nathan, do you have that picture? Yep. If you would put it up, please. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I know. Um, without disclosing what you think you see, lock in your brain what color the shoe is. Let me know when you got it locked. Okay? <laughs> what if it switches back and forth like right before your eyes? I think they have medication for that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Okay, this came up yesterday while I was uh, doing some work. Uh, I, I thank my friend who sent it to me because he's given me quite the conundrum. Uh, how many of you see a gray and green shoe? Gray and green. Okay, be proud. Put your hands up there because you're part of this group. Now, all of the rest of you, I'm assuming, <coughs> excuse me, see pink and white. Gray and white. Okay, you know the, the if you actually put this in, uh, I think they used Corel, and asked it to define the colors, you know what it came up with? Gray and teal. But you know what? Hold on, hold on. Don't get excited. <laughs> the person that actually took the picture took a picture of a pink and white shoe. Okay? Now, they went into this long explanation about right brain thinkers and left brain thinkers. Um, you guys may not know this, but, but Christy and I are pretty different from each other. <laughs> I looked at this thing yesterday and I thought, well, who in the world would ever see pink and white? <laughs> sweetie! Sweetie! What? Come here! I'm busy. Well, when you're done, come here. So she comes out and I say, okay, what color is this shoe? It's grand Pink and white. I got glasses. I know it's not me. Okay? Because when I take them off, I don't see anything. I just see a smear. Okay? I, look, you know, where are we going with this? Here, here's the thing. As we have been working through family relationships, I know that each of us has a different dynamic in our relationships. The dynamic that I had with my father was different than the dynamic that Christy had with her father. Uh, the relationship that I have with my mom is different than the relationship she has with her mom. And I guarantee you, each of you has a, a different relationship with your parents than either Christy or I did. Now they might be similar in some ways, but in other ways they're radically different. Okay. Um, you know, I always use the example, uh, Christy's family, they're, they're very um, German. Um, and, 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 you know, no touch. And they would walk down the hall and they would like turn their back to the wall and scoop by each other so they didn't touch each other. Uh, my family's very Italian. <clears throat> we see somebody call, coming down the hall, we lower our shoulder and run. Okay? That's, that's the difference between the dynamics that we have. Now, I know some of you have had very poor relationships with people in your families. Um, I, I have been privy to some of the things that you guys have to deal with. Um, what I want to show you the illustration of the shoe is that there's not necessarily a right or wrong. Sometimes they're just different. Okay. Um, 
Christy and I had very different methods of parenting our children, especially our daughter. And yes, she is here today. So. <laughs> I only talk about them when they're here to defend themselves. Um, my, my daughter was born a lawyer. <laughs> Everything with her was negotiation. Everything. And Christy, who being a woman has many, many words to spend on the day, um, and, and quite honestly, me being a man, a, a lot of times words exhaust me. Amen. <laughs> we have a saying that at one point or another, each of my kids was told, you're motoring. You're motoring. Your engine's running, but you're just making noise. Okay. Now, um, for example, years ago, we went up to Glacier National Park. Christy's mom and dad came out. They wanted to go see the park. I'm thinking, great. The entire day in a car. My day shot. Okay, that's bad enough. But two things conspired to make it worse. The first being that Christy determined that she was not going to tell Benjamin to stop talking. She was just going to let him see how long he would go. Okay. So that was the first addition to my not very good day. Okay. The second one is we got up about Kalispell and I started passing a kidney stone. Okay. Now, I don't like long times in the car. I have to work up to drive into Missoula. Okay. So this was not a good day for me to begin with. I really don't get the talking and talking and talking just for talking's sake. I, I, you guys would have been proud of me because I actually said somewhat calmly, stop talking. Okay. And kidney stones are just no fun. Okay, they're, they're not fun. Okay, now, backing up to Christy and Mackenzie. Um, Christy would tell Mackenzie to do something. And I know none of you guys have ever experienced this. That's why I'm sharing it with you. This is a day in my house some six years ago. And uh, she would tell Mackenzie to do something, and Mackenzie would uh, then begin to elucidate all the reasons that it should not be done, or why it should be done differently, or why it should be done by someone else. Okay. And Christy would engage her. And they would talk, 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 and they would talk. And I, I, not only do I have a limit on the number of words I say in a day, I have a limit on the number I can hear. Okay. <laughs> And I was drawing very close to the limit, and uh, we still had a lot of the day left. And uh, so I, I assert father privilege. Mackenzie, go do what your mother said. And they both look at me like I just grew another head. <laughs> Look, look, look. You know, there are parents that, okay, parents in here, how many of you have counted to three? Come on, put your hand up if you do the count. How many of you ever actually made it to three? Okay, because my wife had the unique ability to do decimal points. One, two, don't push me because I will, when I get to three, one, two, I would tell the kids at the beginning of the day, hey, look, one warning today. This is it. You step out of line, this is your only warning. So I didn't even bother with one, two, or three. I just knock it off. Okay? We're different. And that was very necessary for each of us. Um, I needed to learn more grace. Um, I, I grew up in a family that was very black and white. Uh, Christy came more from uh, numerous. Uh, grayscale shadings, and uh, we, we balance each other. Uh, 
Um, she, she brings some softness to me. Uh, I, I bring some firmness to her. We, we work together, okay? Neither one is necessarily right or wrong. In any instance, one of us could be right and one very wrong, okay? But different. So we've looked at the relationship dynamic between husband and wife. We've seen that, oh gosh, she walked in, I said all that, and she wasn't here. <coughs> no, don't tell her. <laughs> Nathan, we're gonna need to edit that video. Yeah. I took notes. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. I'll talk with you after church. <laughs> Here's the thing, we, we looked at husband and wife, how God designed them and intended them to work. We looked at the way that, that sin came in and corrupted that dynamic and made it uh, difficult at best. Uh, we've looked at the way that God desires it to exist. Uh, we look from, from sin into the New Testament to what we are called to be as husband and wife. Um, each of us unique, each of us equal before God in that we are all his children. There is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, bond nor free. Okay, but called to different roles. Okay, uh, we then looked at parents and children, and we looked at the responsibilities of each, because each is given responsibilities. You know, uh, parents are to take care of their children; they're to teach them, they're to provide for them. Uh, children are to honor, respect, and obey. Okay, and then we look at that. Okay, when does obey become honor? And, and trying to define that. And, and basically what I, what I told you was it's gonna be different for each person, where that separation is. Uh, I do not presume to instruct my grown children with the expectation that they will obey. But I do presume that when I talk to them, they will honor, they'll, they'll hear me out, okay? Um, we looked at how that has been corrupted. We looked at the uh, Paul warning parents, uh, fathers specifically, to not exasperate their children or to, to antagonize them to bring about their wrath. Um, and, and we looked about uh, how that dynamic is supposed to work. Then we talked about grandparents and grandchildren. And, and scripture has a number of things to say about grandparents and, and grandchildren. Um, uh, we know that uh, the flow of scripture would indicate that honor is due to the grandparents because the children should be seeing their mom and dad honoring their grandparents. Uh, we see that uh, scripture indicates in Proverbs that a, uh, a person will leave an inheritance for his grandchildren. Uh, we, we've looked at how that works. Uh, and, and this week I'm gonna touch just very briefly on siblings, but I really want to wrap this up today, okay? Um, I'm just going to give you some examples of siblings, um, and then we're going to talk about just a couple passages of Scripture. First example, okay? You know you get off on the wrong foot when the first example of siblings you have is Cain and Abel. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> First two born to Adam and Eve. And you know the story, Genesis chapter 4. Cain offers an offering to God, a sacrifice to God that was not acceptable. Abel presents an offering to God that was, was acceptable. And God actually spoke to Cain and he warned him, sin is crouching at your door. Be careful. Well, Cain, being like a lot of us are, went to go see who was at the door and then invited him in for supper. And Cain took Abel out and killed him. Okay. This is the first sibling relationship we see in Scripture. Okay. Now, I don't know about you guys. I was going to bring some pictures uh, with me and my brother Todd. Um, those of you that were fortunate enough to be here a couple years ago when Todd came and visited, got to meet him. You didn't miss him, I guarantee you that. Uh, my brother's loud, okay? And, and he really enjoys being the center of attention. Um, 
Todd and I, uh, he, he was my closest friend up until he turned about 12. Okay. Uh, I have a picture <clears throat> when we were little. I thank God that my children were not as stupid as my brother and I were. <laughs> Uh, we used to have these little red and white tricycles. Anybody have a red and white tricycle when you were a kid? Um, we didn't ride the tricycle like you're supposed to. We stood on the back and pushed with our foot, like kind of like a scooter. And one of our great games was to get on either end of our sidewalk and we'd push the, the tricycles at each other as fast as we could and crash. And we thought that was great fun. Well then, my brother graduated to a yellow two-wheeler, a, a two-wheel bike, and, and his wheel was almost as tall as I was. We tried that game once. Okay, he drove right over the top of me and then fell off and, and cracked his head on the, the concrete. He decided he didn't like that game and I decided I didn't like that game so we quit playing that game. When I got a bike, a two-wheeler, uh, we, we invented new games that were probably just as stupid. Let's see who can ride down the block as fast as they can and make it all the way to the house without wrecking. I tried that once. I hit a pothole and I bounced off the neighbor's car. Okay? And I, I rolled over on my back and I looked up and my brother's leaning over me going, are you okay? <laughs> so I don't know, how long was I out? <laughs> <clears throat> but Todd and I had a very unique relationship. Um, we're very different as people. Um, as children, like I said, he was very loud. Um, my mom used to introduce us to people. Um, we were very similar in height. He's 15 months older than I am, but I've pretty much always been taller than him. Um, but we were both toeheads. We lived in San Diego, so white hair and tan skin. Um, my mom used to tell people, they'd say, well, oh, are these twins? And, you know, which I, I think back now on that, and I think, well, that's kind of offensive. I don't look anything like him. Um, but my mom would introduce us. Well, I had hearing issues when I was a kid. I still have some hearing issues. But, you know, rest assured, it's not my ears. It's my brain. So we're good. Okay? Um, a lot of things come into my ears just jumbled as noise. And uh, so my mom would introduce us. And they'd say, oh, are they twins? And she'd say, oh, no. That's, that's Todd. That's Glenn. They're 15 months apart. And they go, well, how do you tell them apart? She said, oh, it's easy. Todd's the one that's going to cuss you out, and Glenn's the one that's not going to hear it. <laughs> okay? So that, that kind of describes our, our personalities. Um, I actually have my reading Bible, the one that I keep by my bed. It's one that I got when I was 16 years old for my birthday. And uh, I, I marked every passage in the Bible that talks about siblings, specifically brothers. Uh, and I, I marked... Uh, off on the margin, TLVN, that's my brother's initials, Telvin. And uh, I'm Gervin, he's Telvin, okay? Um, and I marked all the ones that, that talked to, first I marked the ones that I believe showed that he was an idiot. I marked all of those first. I highlighted, underlined, and then wrote the initials. And then as, as God was getting a hold of me and, and really trying to take me beyond um, bias, I uh, started going through and started looking at the scriptures that showed my responsibility in that relationship dynamic. So I started writing TLVN and, and highlighting and underlining how I was supposed to act toward him. Okay? Um, now, I don't know a lot of your family uh, sibling rivalries. Vivian has some really cool stories of things she did to her brother. <laughs> You guys look at this innocent lady over here. <laughs> Thank God for his grace and his mercy, right, Vivian? <laughs> Get, if you have opportunity, no, make opportunity to talk to the older people in our church. Let them share their experiences. Let them share what God has done in their life. Let them share their histories. Uh, we've got some amazing stories in this church. Okay. Um, moving forward, I'm just going to hit a couple of these sibling examples. Uh, a little bit later, actually quite a bit later, we have Jacob and Esau. Another sibling rivalry that didn't go real well. Uh, after that, we have uh, Din Dinah and Simeon and Levi. Do you guys remember this story? 
Yeah. Um, if you want to read it, I would encourage you, Genesis 34. Suffice it to say that Simeon and Levi, um, while they were doing what they were doing out of vengeance for their sister, boy, they did it, they did it dirty. Okay? Um, Genesis 37, uh, we have Joseph and his siblings. Um, and you, you know how that story went. Uh, they, they intended something for evil, but God used it for good. Um, we see uh, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, especially in Numbers chapter 12. Um, Aaron and Miriam stand up and, and try to assert their equality with Moses. Um, we see that God was going to kill them. Uh, it, Moses interceded. Uh, leprosy, restoration, uh, we see that dynamic there. Going forward, uh, David's children, Amnon and Tamar, and her brother, Absalom. Uh, you see the dynamic at play there. You guys kind of picking up on, on some of these sibling relationships. Um, going into the New Testament, we have Peter and Andrew. And uh, we believe Andrew was, was a disciple of John the Baptist's. And, and spoke to Peter, who at that point uh, would have been known as Simeon, and uh, told him about the Messiah, but, but nothing changed until Jesus came on the shore and he saw them out fishing, and he called them and said, come and I will make you fishers of men. Uh, and immediately thereafter, uh, in, in Mark, uh, we see James and John that uh, were also fishing and, and this you know sometimes when you really put yourself in the situation in the word um, you can see some kind of interesting <coughs> things because scripture says that James and John were with their father and the servants and they were out fishing now um, you know you get an opportunity look on Google you'll see how they fished with the nets and they threw them out and they dragged the fish back in and uh, they're out there working with dad and, and some of the hired hands and Jesus is walking along the shore and he's got Peter and he's got Andrew and he yells out to James and John and he says, hey, come follow me. And so they ditch dad. They're out of the boat and they're gone. Uh, you know, if that were to happen to me and, you know, we're, we're moving rocks out in the field like we did when we first moved in and some dude walks along the street and calls out to, to Christopher or Donovan or Benjamin and says, hey, Come on, and they take off and leave me with the rocks. I'm going to start hucking a few of them out. You can go when the work's done. But see, that's because I don't understand. I think, I think James and John's dad understood. Okay. Um, going forward, uh, we see that uh, Jesus had his own siblings. Um, and, and quite honestly, I don't think they understood. Uh, at one point... Uh, they were getting ready to go to the feast, and they were kind of bad mouth. And Jesus saying, "Come on, you got to go to the feast, and you know you got to be the center of attention." And Jesus said, "No, I'm not going to go." Uh, at another occasion, uh, they came to where Jesus was, and they were standing outside the house, and they came in and told Jesus, uh, "Your brothers and your sisters and your mother are there, and I want to talk about his response here in just a minute." Okay. Um, Another one we have is Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And that's an interesting dynamic too, isn't it? Mary and Martha were amazing because they, they Mary got it. And, and Martha, um, she had yet to get it. Okay? And then we see also their relationship with Lazarus, their brother. Okay? Now, so we see these examples throughout Scripture. And for the most part, uh, siblings were, um, there's not a good place for them to be, okay? Very few occasions there were good things that happened, uh, but for the most part when it was written down, um, it wasn't a good thing, okay? Now, there are a couple passages that I want to touch on just very briefly. Um, Proverbs 18.24 says, A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Okay. Hold on to that thought. Okay. Uh, a friend loves at all times, 
and a brother is born for adversity. Now, growing up, this is one of the passages I mark Paul's name by, because the way I read this was that um, a friend loves at all times, but your brother, he's the one that's going to make conditions adverse. Okay, but but as I'm growing older, I, I realize, you know, hey, when when times are difficult, I can call Todd anytime, day or night. Okay, if I I'm in need and I need help, I can call him anytime, day or night. Now, if it's when he's sleeping, he's going to help me out, but he's going to give me an earful. Okay, if he's awake, I might get out with just a little bit. All right, uh, but that's his nature. He will give you the shirt off his back. He'll tell you an idiot tell you you're an idiot for losing your shirt, but he'll give you the shirt off of his back, okay? Now, who is this friend who sticks closer than a brother? Jesus. Boy, that was really wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> who is this friend that sticks closer than a brother? Jesus. Jesus. Now, the disciples are walking with Jesus, uh, Matthew chapter 19, and uh, Jesus says something that I think is very profound. Okay. He tells them that everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands. Now if you look at that, uh, we've looked at the relationship dynamic in each of these cases, um, or lands, and then he says, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Now, I believe that this thing that he's establishing here has got to be being grafted into the church. I believe that uh, the brothers and sisters that you've given up will be restored to you through the church. Okay? Um, I believe that the parents that, that you've had to forsake will be met through the church. Um, there, is a, uh, there are more people in this church that I'm closer to than I am to any of my siblings. Okay? There are things that I share with people in the church that I've never shared with my siblings. Okay? Uh, I think that's how tight and intimate the body of Christ is supposed to be. Now, I understand church is made up of people that fail. Congratulations, you're in good ground here because we all fail. All right? Um, but I believe that as the church lives out what it was intended to be, all of those needs will be met. Okay? Uh, but, but let's go one step beyond that, because Jesus also says, uh, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven <coughs> is my brother and sister and mother. Now, think about this for a moment. Okay. Ponder this. Jesus Christ is the only <coughs> Son of the living God. He is the incarnation of the, the image of God. And he says that if we are obedient, that we are his siblings. We become children of God. Jesus is our brother. In another place it says we are co-heirs with him. Um, you know, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I will keep saying it because this is a lie that is so popular in the country today. Um, all humans are not God's children. All humans are God's creation. But John chapter 1 says that uh, to them that believe, he gave the right to be called the children of God. So if they have not accepted, if they have not believed, they're not his children. As a matter of fact, Scripture says they're his enemy. Okay? The family dynamic is, is this. Here. <laughs> this is little Finn, and this is his shoe. <laughs> Listen, 
God desires to be our father, our parent. God desires, he longs for us to be his children. God will meet every need that you have from your broken family. And every one of our families are broken. We've all messed up somewhere, okay? Uh, even good families are, are messed up, okay? Because we're all people. We all have opinions. We all have tempers. We all have things that, that we do we, that we shouldn't, and we have things that we don't do that we should. God desires to be the perfect father for us. That's right. <laughs> I want to encourage you today. I know some of you did not have the best fathers, the best mothers. I know some of you uh, may not have even got to know your father or mother. Uh, I know some of you did not have very good grandparents. I know some of you did not have very good siblings. God wants to make those things right. God wants to treat you the way that he intended you to be treated. God is waiting for you to come to him and let him invade your life. Let him permeate everything that you are. Hold nothing back. That's the first part. Second part is we, the church, is the body of Christ. And a lot of times God gives it to us to live those things out to one another. Okay? God desires us to be his hands and his feet on this earth. God desires that we would be a family. Guess what? You got me and my kooky brother Todd in your family now. Okay? Well, you, you know, I'm, I'm probably just as kooky in other areas. But you know what? <laughs> We're all related now. Okay? I want to encourage you today. If you have had lack, not even, even beyond lack, if you had had injury, whether relationships in your life, I want to encourage you today to forgive. To forgive. And I know some of you have, have had horrific things happen. I know some of you um, have scars. Some of you still have wounds. I want to encourage you to move in forgiveness, to let that burden go. To walk in freedom. That you would no longer be bound by those injuries. Now, just a caveat to that. That does not mean that you put yourself back in that situation. Okay? There may be a, a time where there needs to be some separation. There needs to be some healing. There needs to be some counseling. There needs to be sometimes involvement by other people. Uh, I would encourage you, especially if there's physical hurt going on, talk to somebody, okay? Talk to somebody. If you do not have an advocate in your family to stand up for you, bring it to the church, okay? Let the church help, okay? Father, I thank you today for the family of God. I thank you that you are the perfect father. Father, you have given us the right to call you Abba Father. I thank you, Father, that in you there is healing, there's forgiveness. Father, that we are recipients of unmerited favor. I thank you, Father, that your mercies are renewed every morning. Father, that your grace exceeds our sin. I ask, Father, that if there are those here today that have been hurt in their families, Father, that you would bring healing. I pray for those, Father, that are dealing with, with issues uh, in, in their uh, family lives, that you would bring healing, Father, that you would bring wisdom, that you would bring protection. I ask, Father, that you would make of us a family that would pleasure your heart. We thank you, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.